I was looking for the filter for the cat because probably yesterday you saw the video on the internet with the cat in the with the lawyer so I could not find a cat only today I found the, the tiger and um, so I hope you like it you can take a picture good morning and um, welcome to the class and I hope that you are um, are good and I'll just change this filter now for you so I'll remove the filter so um, yeah thank you for joining the class and I hope that um, you're having a good morning it's very cold in Dublin um, and if you are in Dublin I have sympathy for you especially if you are from Brazil or from Spain it's very cold here at the moment um, so today a very similar structure from yesterday I will give an introduction to the grammar and technical concepts first because in my opinion that's very important the introduction of the technical vocabulary after I will show a video in relation to conversation in Ireland very typical conversation in Ireland very fluent and very normal and probably very difficult to catch so I want to show the vocabulary and the expressions from the conversation after it's possible I continue to an article from Sao Paulo to continue with the vocabulary and the grammar from the article in Sao Paulo and we also have phrasal verbs and idioms to analyze also if, if we have time okay so first um, yes so this is a good opportunity for me to work and um, in May it was necessary for me to stop working and this is a a good opportunity for me to reconstruct and to rebuild my work um, and it's also a good opportunity to know new people and for you it's a very good opportunity to uh, hopefully learn some English and I hope I can help because you want to understand fluent conversation you want to understand real conversation and a lot of you are in England at the moment and it's difficult to understand uh, English so I want to help everything is free and um, I'm very happy to teach for free especially to people who have difficult uh, economic possibilities and, and to pay a teacher is very expensive and to pay for a school is very expensive so I'm very happy with this opportunity to help for free at the end if you're happy and you want to support me and you want to make a little donation it's possible here this is the details um, at the end it's possible for one euro or two euro to support with bizoom in spain or the second possibility with your phone you can scan this picture and it will direct you to paypal for an option of one euro or two euro if you want and at the top it's a website it's only an option but for me maybe in the future i will need your support to continue working in this way okay so let's continue let's start and i will share my screen so here you can see on the left this is the introduction document and every morning this document is very very important for sure so for me there are three categories the use of english is the first category the tenses and the times is the second category and the grammar in general is the third category for me probably the first category is the most important to really improve and to really understand native conversation and fluent conversation because accents we have different accents around the world and in the video today you will see an accent from ireland very normal accent and in liverpool different accent manchester london um, america new york california texas australia extremely different accents and very difficult to catch the significance and to understand extremely difficult so for me this is a very important area the accents okay phrasal verbs are also extremely important concept particular to English in Spanish I no tiene phrasal verbs it's a different concept and in English they're very typical so basically it's the verb and the preposition it's possible literal significance but also possible a double or a second significance and this is the importance of the phrasal verbs we use phrasal verbs all the time every day every moment every situation we use them all the time and they're extremely small extremely quick and very important 
and probably difficult for you to catch. So I want to help, particularly in this category for phrasal verbs, okay? The next category are for idioms. So idioms are like expressions or sayings. So very typical expressions with family, with friends, in conversation, extremely fundamental, extremely common, and extremely normal part of English, okay? So we have a big list of phrasal verbs and a big list of idioms that I want to help. Conversation and pronunciation is also very important. And it's possible today, if you want to join the class, if you want to participate in the class with speaking, you can connect with me on Zoom today. I will show you the code, okay? So if you have your Zoom open, you can connect with me. And at the end of the class, we can have a little conversation. So here's the meeting ID and the passcode if you want to request to join, to participate in Zoom. And um, the topic can be maybe COVID, your experience of COVID and just an introduction, just an opportunity to practice and to speak. And um, puedo hablar en español si necesitas una ayuda, pero it's a good opportunity to, if you want at the end, okay? So for me, speaking and conversation is very important and pronunciation. And during the class, I try to identify the typical issues, the typical problems in pronunciation in English. And it's very important always to recognize the problems and the uh, issues in relation to pronunciation. This is just a little list of typical pronunciation difficulties, okay? The tenses, so the next category are the times and the tenses we speak in English. So basically in English and every language, we speak in different times. It's possible the simple, for example, the present simple, one action you do in the present. It's possible the past simple, one action you completed or did in the past. And it's possible the future simple, one action you will do in the future. The construction is irregular, particularly in the past, but yes, it's possible regular. For example, look, the verb to look in the present, I look. The past is regular, I looked. ED is normally the past suffix for regular and future, I will look, okay? There's a second construction for the future, going to. I am going to look, I am going to eat, I will eat, I will look, and they're practically the same. So that's the simple, okay? And an example of irregular in the past is the verb to eat. I eat and the past I ate. So that's the simple present, simple past and simple future. The next concept is the continuous, the present continuous, the subject I, the verb to be, I am eating, the gerund ing. I am eating, I am going, I am speaking. That's the present continuous. The past continuous is a similar construction, but necessary the verb in to be in the past. I was eating, I was drinking. So it's a continuous period in the past and the future continuous is similar but the verb to be is in the future tense i will be eating i will be going so that's the concept of the continuous and the simple we also have the idea and the tense of the perfect so the present perfect is a period in time that started in the past it's finished but it's related to the present and the construction is the subject extra verb have and the participle for example i have eaten my breakfast this is the same example every morning i have eaten my breakfast it started in the past it's finished but it's relevant to the present because now i am not hungry that's the present perfect the past perfect the construction is subject verb to have in the past i had participle eaten and usually it's the period before another action in the past simple for example i had eaten my breakfast when my friend contacted me in the past simple. That's the difference between the past perfect and the present perfect. It's possible the future perfect also. I will have eaten, I will have gone. It's a little more advanced and it is possible. So it's important to understand the concepts of the times and the tenses in English. Very important. If you're a beginner, it's fundamental. If you're an expert in English, it's also important to always remember so the different times and the different tenses are really important especially to explain at the beginning okay the concept of the infinitive is the base or the foundation of the verb and the infinitive is to 
to eat, to go, to drink, to have, to meet, to drink, that's the infinitive to, okay? So normally I mention the infinitive and that's the significance, to eat, to go, to drink, okay? Conditionals. So in English, the theory for the conditionals is a little heavy and a little complicated to read the theory because we have um, different tenses, but basically it's connected to if. So for example, if it rains today, I will go to the city center. If I spoke to my friend yesterday, I would have mentioned something different. So the time depends on the if, and that's the first conditional, the second conditional, the third conditional, the zero conditional, and the mixed conditional. The theory is a little heavy, but in reality, it's a little more fluid and a little more flexible, okay? The other concept that is important is the active and the passive. So basically, in English, we have an active and a passive. Here's one example for the active. Subject, I, verb, kick the ball. I kick the ball. That's the active. And the passive, it's necessary to change the position. The ball, extra verb to be, in the past, was kicked by me. Okay, and here's the example. So the man is the subject. Kicked is the verb in the past. And the ball is the object. And the passive, you change the position. So the ball, necessary extra verb to be, was participle kicked by the man. So that is more or less the different tenses and the different concepts in English in relation to the time and the verbal tenses. Very important always to remember in your mind, okay? The final category are just general topics in general. So we have the concept of a noun and a substantive. So a substantive and a noun is basically a person, a place or a thing. Almost everything is a substantive. The bottle, the cat, the house, substantive and always in English it's necessary an article okay in English we have two articles a house or the house the house is definite article a house is indefinite article okay and we have one exception when the word or the vowel when the word begins with a vowel a e i o u it's necessary an the majority of the time it's necessary an when the word begins with a vowel okay we also have the concept of countable and uncountable. So substantive is countable. Is it possible to count one house, two house, three houses? Yes. So the house is countable. Chocolate. Is it possible to count chocolate? No. One chocolate, two chocolate, three chocolate. It's impossible. We count one piece of chocolate, one bar of chocolate, one bit of chocolate. So bit is possible, countable, but chocolate is uncountable. Water is uncountable money is uncountable air is uncountable so there's two categories countable and uncountable this is important in relation to how much and how many how much is related to uncountable how much water how much chocolate how much money that's uh, uncountable how much and how many is related to countable how many houses how many cars how many cats okay that's the important concept between countable and uncountable the adjective, basically an adjective describes the substantive. So the substantive house, adjective is big, big house. Car, small car. Um, person, angry person. So the adjective, the position of the adjective is before the substantive. In Spanish, in Portuguese, it's the opposite. The adjective is after. But in English, it's before. The big house, okay, the angry man, okay. Adverb. So the concept of the adverb is to describe the verb, the verb to run, to eat, to drink. And it's necessary to describe the adverb, to run quickly, to drink slowly, to speak quickly also. Okay. And normally the adverb has the L-Y ending in English, L-Y, mente in Espanol, suavemente, lentamente, rapidamente. So mente in Espanol in English is L-Y. Normally, that's the general rule. We have a few more. Uh, adverbs in relation to time already now yet still soon the concept of modal verbs are very common and very important and very particular to English so can is related to ability I can play football I can contact my friend it's my ability then could may and might are generally for possibility very very similar I could go to the cinema I may go to the cinema I might go to the cinema 
it's a possibility it's an option it's not definite it's not secure uh, uh, sure it's an option and it's a possibility could may and might may and might are maybe a little more polite and a little more formal may and might okay um, but they're very very similar could may and might shall is very similar to will and should it's usually the question it's older English shall we go to the party shall we have a coffee it's a question will we have a coffee will we go to the party okay should is usually for recommendation and advice so if I want to recommend a book for you you should read the book you should contact your friend you should speak with him it's my advice and my recommendation okay so that's typical for should ought to is the same pronunciation is difficult so the G is silent you ought to it has the same significance as should and it's for a recommendation and advice must is obligation you must collect the children you must speak with your friend you must do this the rule after all modal verbs after the next verb is the infinitive but we eliminate to so it's necessary can go must speak and um, ought to see okay so it's necessary to remove the infinitive to of the verb okay the error is the modal and to go the error is must to go that's the error so it's necessary to remove to okay prepositions are a big 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 part of English and basically they are related to position and movement and we have a lot of prepositions for example in in the room at the corner on the table under over beside in front of um, and they're very 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 uh, com uh, common we use them all the time and they're so important to really understand more or less all the significances of the prepositions and particularly in phrasal verbs we have a lot of prepositions also okay this section is very important the difference in the pronoun the difference between my hat mi kappa my hat your hat but the hat is mine the hat is yours okay or give the hat to me or I give the hat to you that is very important the difference between the subject pronoun the object pronoun and the possessive pronoun basically that's that category and it's very important to be very clear particularly with his and her his and hers and him and her you need to be very very clear with this in English so I recommend you study a little and um, the British Council have a very good website for grammar the British Council grammar website is excellent also the Cambridge website for grammar is super so for me they are the two recommendations for grammar the British Council grammar website and the Cambridge grammar website are perfect to study and to prepare you need to be clear the difference between this that these and those so the substantive and you have this that these and those before the substantive it depends if it's singular or plural for example telephone this telephone a key here this telephone that telephone away these telephones plural and those telephones plural that's the general rule and you need to be clear with the concept okay there is a difference between another other and the other another is usually singular substantive another day another week another year singular and other is generally for plural other days other weeks other years okay that's the general rule there is a possibility with the other so when you have an option of two choices do you want this one or do you want the other one so when you have a choice of two it's very typical to say the other one specific that's a, a little possibility as well okay very good and generally that's that's more or less everything in the introduction it's possible to construct questions how to construct a question normally we have do or we invert the affirmative I am happy am I happy is the question so inversion is possible for the question or do is typical for the question the idea or the con text and the concept of suffix and uh, prefix is very important when you study English for example the suffix a n c e is normally a substantive the importance for example so a n c e normally substantive i z e normally the verb to realize to fantasize they are the verb i z e or i s e able is usually adjective okay um, l y is normally adverb 
pre is before, anti is against, contra in Espanol, and negative is irregular, im and un. Okay, it's irregular, negative. Then we have the linkers, however, furthermore, um, as well as, because, and, but th those are linkers and they're very important also. Okay, um, vocabulary is very important as well. So specific vocabulary in relation to a particular area is very important. If you are preparing for an exam and you want to prepare um, uh, vocabulary for environment, technology, that's very important as well. And during the class, I try to help with vocabulary. Writing is a completely different ability and a completely different skill. And it's available if you want to send me some writing, I can correct your writing and show you the errors and the mistakes and the good content during the class if you want. So if you want to send me writing, I can correct the writing for you. And during the class, I can explain to everybody if you give me permission. Okay, and then exams. Different exams in English are very important. The Cambridge exams, the IELTS exams, and uh, very, very common and very popular. Okay, good, well done. So yesterday, we looked at this video. This is a telenovela, okay? And a telenovela in English is a soap, a TV soap or a series. And it's curious, a soap is normally a jabón for your hands, in Spanish, jabón. But the name of the telenovela in English is a soap. I think because originally, at the beginning, the company for soap was supporting or advertising the product and possibly that's the connection but the name is a soap a telenovela in espanol okay and this program is a very famous soap a very very old irish uh, soap i think maybe 30 40 years maybe and the name is fair city okay and yesterday we looked at the first scene for maybe two minutes a typical conversation and today we look at the second scene so first i want you to listen to the video and watch the video and try to understand and after i will explain the vocabulary and explain the important um secrets and then after you can watch a, a second time okay so here is the video and i'm going to play and hopefully you can understand a little and hopefully we have no problem with the internet and with the connection and with technology it's it's possible okay so i'm going to play and uh, hopefully you understand with the audio it's possible okay Okay, perfect. So that's a really good example of native conversation, very, very normal conversation. And it's a perfect example of the difficulty to learn English. So now I want to show you the vocabulary. So here you can see the vocabulary, okay? So I'll try to make the screen or the text a little bigger also so you can see. And very simple conversation, very normal conversation, but it's also very, very important. So here at the beginning, the lady says hi, and he says hey, something up. Okay, so that's important. People probably understand what's up, 
that's a very very famous expression so what's up has the significance uh, what's happening what's the story um, how are you what is your situation what is the news what is happening what is uh, the story they are very very typical questions como que tal in English or in Espanol que tal como estas what's up what's happening and this is the reason for the application it's a joke or a mix of the application what's up because app is application so it sounds similar to what's up and that's the reason for the connection what's up and what's up so what's up is a question how are you and um, what is happening and here the lady asks something in particular up so basically she thinks there is a problem and she said is something the problem is something up okay and the preposition is important because up is like a peer so when everything is down there's no problem but if something's up you have a problem so it's a very simple expression but basically it means is there a problem are you okay something up what's the problem a little negative question okay carol's handwriting so you have two words hand and writing but the handwriting is on the paper that's the quality of the writing the handwriting okay on his order so on is for the paper because the order in the company is on the paper so for a surface normally the preposition is on on the table on the book on the television on the internet so the surface normally it's on and the order for the paper in the company is on the order okay again the future two possibilities for the future I will need so the verb is to need and one possibility is I will need or this is the future I'm going to need okay I am going to need so I will need and the Rosetta Stone is the application for language okay so it's a joke I'm going to need the rep uh, the Rosetta Stone to make sense so that's the connection to make sense is to understand so I don't understand the problem I need to make sense of the problem it is very important in English and here it's the substitution of the handwriting so I need to make sense of the handwriting I need to understand the handwriting okay and that's the first sentence I got your usual there so this is interesting in the cafe the verb to get is to obtain okay so the verb to get is to obtain or order okay so if I go to the shop and I ask my friend do you want anything in the shop and my friend says yes get me a bottle of water get me a bar of chocolate obtain or buy or order okay so that's the significance of get the past simple is got so get is the present and got is the past and here the man says I got your usual and your usual order your usual drink your regular drink your normal drink okay so I bought the verb to buy comprar and bought so I bought your usual drink I obtained your usual drink I ordered your usual drink okay and there is the position because here and the coffee or the drink is there so I obtained your normal drink here or there okay thanks so I met is the past simple subject is I met is the verb to meet and the past is met meet met Dervla is a very Irish name it's a it's a woman's Irish name Dervla there's a few possibilities for the spelling but it's a very typical Irish name I met Dervla on the way over so on the way is in your uh, route so I work I live here and my job is here so I'm on my way okay so it's in, in La Camina a Camino in Espanol um, for example your friend contacts you and asks you where are you you say I am on the way I am on my way I am in the on the road okay on my way very important expression very simple very normal on my way over is the preposition because you are here and your friend is here so I'm on my way over okay and then it's a question yeah yeah she said keen is taking so the verb to take present continuous is taking subject a but this is a very typical boy's name in Ireland keen present continuous is taking object pronoun her remember the object pronoun she is the subject pronoun and her is the object pronoun to so this is the typical preposition with take so normally we say to take somebody to that's the typical structure and a spa is a place for the jacuzzi the swimming pool the sauna the spa 
this afternoon okay it's possible in the afternoon as well the preposition for the afternoon in the afternoon in the morning in the evening in the night but for this example it's just in okay so in the morning in the evening in the afternoon and in the night as well okay so they are possible for the preposition in and here it's just this afternoon so um this is a very good expression so he says well splashing the cash is he so the affirmative he is that's the subject affirmative he is the question you change the position is he so it's a question number one well in espanol is como pues entonces it's like in espanol it's um very similar to okay so the verb in english is to splash and it's very typical with water so you are in water and you splash the water okay so to splash somebody is to put water on somebody in the car you drive the car on the road and you have the puddle so the puddle is when the rain and you have the water and the car drive through the puddle and you splash the person okay we have one expression in english with money and with cash cash is the physical money like the notes and the coins so to splash the cash is to spend a lot of money it's a famous expression and the significance is to spend maybe extravagant or to buy something very expensive or to buy a lot of things that's to splash the cash so you have a big impact with your money very famous expression a little informal and this category is probably idioms okay so to splash the cash the significance is to spend a lot of money um very very good expression very typical in conversation and very normal and he says okay he's splash he's spending a lot of money is he so he's a little sarcastic and she says well subject it so normally in english it's necessary always necessary the subject in spanish in portuguese it's possible to eliminate the subject but in english the majority of the time it's necessary the subject and when you don't know it's frequently it okay so it was her christmas gift so basically the difference between gift and present is exactly the same regalo so it's a substantive a gift or a present is exactly the same okay a gift or a present are the substantive but it is possible as well the verb to gift or the verb to present and she says um it's a christmas present it's a christmas gift and they that's the subject are this is really the the verb to be so they are and it's possible to eliminate the a if you want there only getting to use it now so it is the present use is the verb and getting to use it so getting again is very flexible and in this case it means maybe arriving to the moment so you get to dublin like arrive to dublin and you get to use it means you arrive to the opportunity to use the present it's a very flexible verb and very good example of get okay and this is a perfect example of difficulty in english so basically they are only arriving to the opportunity to use the present now okay ah good for them so good situation that's that's a good news for them i would love something like that so this is the verb i would love okay in the conditional in the hypothetical situation i would love something like that and it's possible in this case this and that no problem i would love something like this or i would love something like that it has exactly the same significance here so it's flexible okay uh, if we had the time so this is the conditional again if we had the time in theory hypothetically if we had the time okay well again i am off today so the preposition off is basically this movement off on the table off the table but for work its concept is you are in work you are at work and you are on so you are active like the light the light is on the light is active so you are on you are working and if you are off you are not working you're not active like the computer the computer is on it's functioning and the computer is off not functioning so you are off means you're not working okay a day off a free day they are this typical vocabulary a day off or a free day from work okay so she says i am off today in relation to work the concept is work so he the man says go with them so this is the object pronoun 
go with you, go with me, go with him, go with her, go with you, go with them. Okay, so that's the object pronoun. The subject pronoun is, is they, ellos in Espanol, but the object pronoun is them. And then is in Espanol entonces, or in this case, in that case, then. Okay, and the lady says, are you mad? So again, the affirmative, you are, subject verb, you are, question, are you? Mad is crazy. Are you mad? Are you stupid? Are you crazy? Mad is crazy or stupid or angry. Three possibilities. Crazy or um, angry. Mad. Okay, so here it's probably crazy. Are you crazy? Again, the conditional. I would be like for comparison or similarity. I am like similarity or comparison. And this expression is very, very famous as well. So the wheel of the car, you have two wheels on the bicycle. But in the romantic situation, especially this week with Valentine's Day, so imagine there's two people on a cita, on a date, and you have an extra friend. So this extra friend is a little uncomfortable situation. So that friend is the third wheel. It's the expression in English. In Espanol, it's algo como candela. Tienes un eh, frase con candela. Pero in English, it's the third wheel. So the extra person that's not really necessary, not required very famous expression and very appropriate for Valentine's Day this week. It will be fine, it will be okay. Remember yesterday we saw two significances for fine. The first one is okay, are you fine, I am good, I am fine, I am good. The second significance in Espanol is multa, like penalty. So the security man gives you a fine, which is a penalty. Okay, so fine has two significances. The first significance is okay and the second significance is a penalty. Okay. Um, no, it wouldn't be, it would not be fine. Again, the conditional, it would not be fine. I hope, subject, verb in the present, you are subject and verb in the present to be joking. So that's the present continuous. I hope you are joking, okay? And the verb is to joke and the substantive is a joke, okay? And in Espanol is una broma. A joke is the verb and the substantive is a joke. Okay, um, that's important for sure. And then he says, ha, course. So normally in English it's of course, por supuesto, of course. But it's possible to say course and people understand the same significance. So a little informal and really he means of course, but it is possible, course. Okay, maybe we could. So maybe is the, the first word, it's a possibility. Subject, we, modal verb could. Remember, could, may, might for possibility. It's a modal. And the next verb after the modal is in the infinitive, but we eliminate to. So really, could, to do is the verb to do in the infinitive, but because it's a modal, we eliminate to. So we could do, we could, uh, we may do, we might do. Okay, something, algo. Very good example of the modal. Finally, you are taking, so the present continuous, subject, you, present continuous are taking and this is a famous expression a leaf out of my book a leaf is connected to the tree so you have the tree and you have the leaves plural singular leaf but also in the book in the past the original book maybe 100 200 years ago was the leaf from the tree so the expression is to take a leaf from my book is to copy or to imitate somebody okay so Kean is the boy he is taking his girlfriend to the spa so the girl makes the comparison that this man is imitating or copying Keen. so he is taking a leaf out of his book very very famous expression and the leaf i think in espanol hoja and it's typical from the tree singular but plural you need to be careful with the plural is leaves okay and it's from the tree, our ball in Espanol. So you take a leaf from my book, I take a leaf from your book, I imitate you or I copy you with some action. Okay? Very good expression, very, very good um, comment and very typical for con conversation. And again, the preposition is important out because for book, it's in the book or out of the book. Okay? So I am reading the book, but my name is in the book, so in the book and out of the book okay ah i wouldn't go that far so again this is a very typical conversation expression so conditional i would not go 
that far. So far is lejos in Espanol, but it's a metaphor for your action. So the lady is comparing his action to Kean's action. So he's imitating, but the man says, no, 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 I wouldn't agree with this. I wouldn't go that far to your step, to your comment. So I disagree a little. Very famous expression, I would not go that far. So somebody makes the comment and you agree totally with the comment or you do not go that far. You disagree a little. Very, very good expression for conversation. Do lunch. Very interesting because normally lunch, we say to have lunch or to eat lunch. Okay, normally the typical verb is to have lunch. Okay, and in Spanish, it's very typical error in English to say to lunch. So the verb in English normally is to have lunch, to have dinner, to have breakfast. Number one, always have lunch, have dinner, have breakfast. Yes, it's a little more flexible in theory. It's more flexible to say to lunch, to breakfast, to dinner. It's possible, but it's not typical and it's not number one. Number one is have lunch, have dinner, have breakfast. Um, and it is possible to do lunch. It's a bit more flexible, a bit more informal. To do lunch is like a, an activity. So be careful with this expression, to do lunch. It's like an activity, but number one is to have lunch, to have dinner, to have breakfast, okay? There is another possibility to dine, which is cenar in Espanol. So really the verb is to dine and it's probably formal, okay? So you're dine. And in English, we have a dining room, which is the special room in the house for the dinner, for the table, for the meal. That's the dining room. We have a dining table, okay? And uh, in America, they have the name for the restaurant. So in Ireland, in England, in uh, Europe, probably the restaurant is more typical. But in the United States, it's more typical, the diner, okay? And the pronunciation or the spelling is this, the diner. So be careful with the spelling, the diner, and then it's different from the dinner. So the dinner is your food in Ireland. That's the dinner with two N's, and the diner is one N, and it's the restaurant in America. Okay, so you need to be very, very careful because the verb is to dine, which is formal, probably very formal to dine, and really it's to have lunch, to have breakfast, to have dinner. So, okay, be careful. So here it's a little creative to do lunch. Very exciting. Also, you need to be clear with the difference between exciting and excited. This is very important category for adjectives. So two adjectives, exciting and excited. Two adjectives. So your feeling, your sensation, yourself, I am excited. Tengo muchísimo ganas. I am excited. I'm very happy. I'm motivated. But the movie, the idea is exciting because it's away. So the idea is exciting. The movie is exciting. The book is exciting but I am excited, okay? It's similar concept with bored, boring, interested, interesting, and the error is very funny and very uh, entertaining. When the person makes the error, it's very funny because the difference between I am interested and I am interesting, it's a big, big, big difference, okay? So interested and interesting has a big, big difference. So. This is your feeling, ED, with excited, I am excited, ED, and I am interested, ED. It's your sensation, it's your feeling. But the book or the movie, because it's away, it is interesting, it is interesting. The idea, so there's a big difference between um, the two. So you need to be careful between the difference, okay? And she says the idea, the concept of lunch is very exciting, but she is excited, okay? Don't tell me where, so that's the negative. So that, so that's the consequence. So that it, again, the subject, so basically the situation, the moment, future will be substantive, a surprise, okay? Then the man says, uh, if you like. So basically the pronunciation, if ye like, but really it's incorrect and it's informal and it should be if you like, of course, but it's conversation, so it's more flexible. So. What are your plans between, entre, between now and then? So what are your plans between now and then? Okay, well, you can give us a hand. So this is an expression, mano is the hand, and to give somebody a hand is to help somebody. 
ayudar in espanol so give me a hand is to help somebody very famous expression to give someone a hand has the significance to help okay and the man says again modal so it's ability so that you can and the next verb is to give but the rule after the modal we eliminate to okay so you can give us and this is the object pronoun give me give you give him give her give us so really it's plural nosotros give us a hand but this is possible also just me if you give me a hand it's possible in informal conversation give us a hand very incorrect but it's very possible to give us a hand has the significance give me a hand okay but in this case i think it's plural because it's him and other people i think okay loading so the verb is to load como cargar load the car load the phone loading on the computer cargar in espanol so here veg is very typical and very short for vegetable vegetables okay so vegetables and the short word is veg so you want veg for your dinner you have to eat a lot of veg is the same as vegetables okay into that's the preposition with loading loading into so it's the movement into the van into the car and the station again if ye like which is the same significance if you like but in conversation informal it's obviously common this sense but it's not correct okay cas is the girl cas is helping so that's the present continuous is helping okay and then she says yeah that is so subject that verb is negative not so not is for the verb the difference between no and not is very important so no and not not is for the verb and not is for the adjective okay so for example i do not i will not i have not verb an adjective not happy not tired not hungry not mad not angry so not is for the verb and not is for the adjective no is for the substantive or the noun okay and for example no time no money no energy no food so for noun and substantive it's no and for not it's the verb and the adjective very very simple rule but very important and here it's the verb is not okay it is not really what i had in mind so the structure is to have in mind or to keep in mind okay your plan what is your idea what do you want to do what do you have in mind what's your opinion what's your idea okay i didn't so this is the subject the negative not the verb think and in the past it's necessary did in the negative i did not think the verb to do didn't think so is the substitution and this substitute for the activity or the feeling so basically this is the substitution for uh, this sentence so i did not think this is what you had in mind it's possible to say i did not think so 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 is for substitution okay this is a famous expression as well to look forward to forward is the direction F go for example travel go forward go backward go sideward and look forward is an expression in espanol is como uh, tengo ganas de nuevo um, you're optimistic you're very excited about the future or about the plans and it's a very very common expression so for example i am looking forward to the weekend has the significance you are optimistic you're very excited you're very uh, motivated for the weekend you're looking forward to very very famous very important okay so the summer i am looking forward to the summer i'm optimistic i'm very excited about the summer and she the lady i am subject verb um present continuous preposition forward to lunch though so though is possible at the end and the significance in spanish is okay and it's a contrast like however sin embargo in espanol i'm looking forward to lunch however contrast okay yeah sure okay so that is a good example and now i want to show you the video again so this time i hope you can understand a little better so we go back to the to the beginning and hopefully there's no problem with the internet i think it's a little slow for the moment 
but I think it's a good idea to try and listen again and hopefully we can understand it. So one second, I think the computer is a little bit slow. Okay, so here we go. This is the end of the perfect. Okay. Um I will keep the document here. I'll try to keep the document here. No, I'll show you what I'll do. I'll just keep this document beside me and you can identify the vocabulary at the same time and I will close my window. Okay, so one second. Remember the beginning. So the beginning or the start is here. So she says, hi, hey, something up. So let's go, okay? well done that's just a very very short video very interesting and difficult really really difficult to understand but this is exactly the level of local conversation and it's a good idea to uh, do this activity okay so now I want to continue with the article so yesterday we are two days ago this is the article from the National Geographic Paulo okay and the story is the writer's perfect day in Sao Paulo so this is the title you can see a writer's perfect day in Sao Paulo it's a description of a typical day in Sao Paulo and we completed the first paragraph the second paragraph the morning the third paragraph and I think now we begin with the afternoon so the afternoon typical for the writer in Sao Paulo and I'll just move down the screen so you can see so first I want to practice for pronunciation. I want to read and then after I will analyze the vocabulary to uh, show you the grammar topics, okay? So here we go, this is the afternoon and here we go, sorry. Okay, so I will read just for pronunciation and then we can check later for the vocabulary, okay? So start your afternoon on Paulista Avenue, dropping by the Sao Paulo Museum of Art. A stunning project by renowned architect Lina Bobardi boasting deeply inspiring and important collections if you would like to see some of Brazil's most celebrated art also check out Instituto Moreira Sales a new building where you will find permanent collections of large-scale photography music literature iconograph iconography and paintings you don't need to be hungry, to snack on dadinos de tapioca, cheese cubes made from Brazilian tapioca flour, at Balau, a popular ground floor restaurant at IMS. Balau is a spin-off of Chef Rodrigo Oliveira's famous Mocoto restaurant that draws crowds to eat his contemporary Brazilian dishes. You the vocabulary. And first, the important preposition is here. So for avenue, the typical preposition is on. Because avenue is a surface, it's on the avenue. So start your afternoon. And um, this is the substantive. Afternoon is the noun or the substantive. Your is the possession. My afternoon, your afternoon, his afternoon. Possessive pronoun. And on is for the avenue. This is a phrasal verb. So the verb is to drop drop the bottle drop the pen and drop by has the significance to visit 
okay so if your friend is here and you live here you drop by your friend by is the preposition like beside so to drop by is to visit so here it's the gerundio the gerund basically the significance is to visit okay so to drop by has the significance of to visit and i just want to show you the text here okay so to drop by has the significance to visit it's also possible to drop in which is the same drop in drop over okay because the preposition for the house you drop over okay drop in and drop by so they have very very similar significance basically to visit the sao paulo museum of okay of uh, masap a stunning project so project is the substantive and article so here project is the substantive here we have the article the indefinite article and stunning is the adjective very important adjective okay so there is a verb to stun and it's like to shock so the police typically have the pistol the stun gun the stun gun is the pistol to shock the people not to kill okay a stun gun so basically to stun is to shock or to surprise okay to shock or surprise and the adjective is um stunning very very good adjective very descriptive very uh, advanced and basically it means really shocking or surprising but usually in a good way so for example the football if the result in the football is a big big surprise it's a stunning victory it's a stunning result it's a big surprise huge surprise or possible if the picture or the painting is beautiful and it surprises you because it's so beautiful it's stunning or it's amazing also for people if the person at the party is very elegant and looking very very good it's possible to say wow you are beautiful you are stunning okay the weather is stunning it's a very typical adjective and very very good so here it's a synonym for amazing okay so an amazing uh, stunning because it impacts your sensation or your feeling by is usually the activity so made by me written by me done by me so usually by represents the person who does the activity okay so project was created by renowned is like famous or popular or well known okay renowned a little advanced architect lena bow boasting is a very good adjective sorry very good verb to boast basically is a little negative so imagine i win the lottery so imagine i win the lottery and i want to tell everybody oh i won the lottery i have a lot of money i'm fantastic i'm great so to boast is this action when you tell a lot of people the positive things it's a little rude and maybe a little ignorant and a little arrogant so to boast is usually negative okay but in this case it's more uh, it's it's not very negative in this case for example dublin boasts uh, two universities it's like possession it has okay so dublin boasts uh, trinity college and university college dublin it's like proud orgioso and it's possible negative and it's possible uh, general okay proud is the adjective so it really is proud but it's possible yet yeah, to be negative as well uh, deeply is the adverb so here deep is profundo the water is very deep your experience is very deep and here we have the suffix ly so the suffix is the adverb the ly deeply and it's connected to the verb inspiring okay so the verb is to inspire and it's related to inspiration the substantive is inspiration and um, the adjective is inspiring okay and it's a good example of the adverb deeply inspiring greatly inspiring deeply inspiring okay and important collections here's the conditional if you would like that's the conditional if you would like to see some of brazil's most celebrated art also check out so check out is the second verb in the conditional the first verb is if you would like to do this then check out institute morales salad and the significance of check out is basically to visit or to investigate okay so to check out is a phrasal verb 
and the significance is to investigate or to uh, to visit or to look and for example the restaurant in Dublin I recommend this restaurant so I say to you should modal verb should for recommendation you should check out this restaurant you should visit you should look um, and the significance of out is probably also check is the verb to look check my watch check the time check my bag and check out is like all so you check out all the the detail of the shop or the detail of the restaurant it's possible in the hotel it's possible in to check in the hotel and to check out so it's all the details okay so it is important and here it's just to visit or to look or to inspect or to see the Institute okay a new building so building is the substantive new is the adjective and a is the article where you will find so you is the subject will find is the future simple permanent collections collections is the substantive and permanent is the adjective large scale photography okay so the scale is usually from 0 to 10 this is the scale and the project is large scale so it's a big size a big quantity a big project okay um here the next sentence you do not need to be hungry so this is the subject you the negative we have do and not so you do not need so the verb is to need then we have the second verb to be and the adjective hungry so you need to be clear with the difference between hungry and angry okay hungry is the adjective angry is also the adjective but the pronunciation is different and the significance is completely different hungry is the food uh, in Espanol, tengo fam. I am hungry. Angry is very uh, crazy, very mad. You are angry. Enfenta, enfadado in Espanol, something like that. So you need to be clear with the pronunciation. To snack is a verb, and to snack is to have a little food. Okay? And it's very typical with the preposition on. So I have fruit, and I want to snack on the fruit. Okay? So to eat a little fruit. It's very typical the preposition snack on I have chocolate and I want to snack on my chocolate so to eat a little so it is very typical the preposition on with snack okay the substantive is a snack so a snack is a little piece of food for a little help during the day okay so the verb is to snack and the substantive is a snack okay good and here we go with the next one snack on uh, made from so that's the typical preposition the verb is to make the past irregular is made from so this table this table is made from wood okay made from is the typical combination with the preposition made from okay flour is the type of food and I'm going to show you here the translator because flour is very important in English and just so you're sure we type flour and this is the dictionary with a lot of different adjectives. So that's Bulgarian, Dutch, French, German, Hindi, Hungarian, Italian, Farina, Japanese, Korean, Polish, Portuguese, Romanian, Spanish, Swahili, Swedish, Thai, and Vietnamese. Okay, so that's the significance of flower. <laughs> okay, so arena in Espanol. Um, at is the location. At the museum at the, the station at the cafe so specific location at okay and Balau is the museum the popular ground floor so floor is typical in the house you have the floor similar to ground so tierra is the earth tierra is normally in the field in the grass that's the the ground but the floor is usually in the building in the house you have the floor but with the big building planta in espanol diferentes plantas primero planta segunda planta tercera planta in english it's floor so normally we have ground floor reception ground floor first floor second floor third floor okay and here it's the ground floor restaurant again preposition at ims this expression is very important very very difficult expression but very very good so the verb is to spin and in the gymnasium you have spinning class so in the gymnasium for the cycling for the bicycle this is spinning because the wheel on the bicycle spin so this is the action to spin um, and related to dizzy we have an adjective dizzy to be dizzy is spinning so for example my head 
is spinning after the party my head is spinning you feel dizzy okay so the verb to spin is this action spin the wheel um, in the washing machine you have to spin a spin is the washing machine so that's the concept it's the same but a spin off is a good example of a series okay so imagine the series breaking bad i think breaking bad was the series the original principal main series breaking bad and the character was saul i think the character in breaking bad is saul but then after breaking bad they produced a second series with the name better call saul so the second series was a spin off from better calls from breaking bad okay so that's the concept of spin off is a product from the original principal product difficult concept but very very fluent and very normal so here the restaurant Balao is the restaurant is a spin-off of Rodrigo Oliveira's famous Mokoto so Mokoto is the original restaurant and the second restaurant produced from the first restaurant the idea was produced from the first restaurant so it's a spin-off very typical in the movies you have Batman and the spin-off is maybe the Joker so it's a good 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 structure a little advanced but very important then this is for possession so Oliveira's is possession Brian's pen Brian's book so the apostrophe and the s is typical for possession draw is a very important verb yes it's typical for picture and painting you draw a picture you draw a painting number one dibujar in espanol but the second significance is very common and very advanced and very important to draw the same example an infection imagine i have an infection in my hand and i draw the infection out it's like extract okay so to draw out is to extract in the house in the table cajon in espanol in the table in ireland you have the drawer okay for your clothes the typical location for your clothes that's because you extract so the significance is to extract and also attract so with my hat my big yellow yellow colorful hat my colorful hat attracts a lot of attention it draws attention to myself so it's a very important verb the first significance is painting or picture and draw and the second significance is to extract or attract okay and here it's attract it attracts crowds so a lot of people a crowd is a lot of people okay so i'll write that to draw has the significance to extract and to attract and a crowd is a group of people mucho dumbre in espanol i think a crowd okay very good so that's a good example and the final explanation is the difference between a dish and a plate in spanish in portuguese it's plato so you go to the restaurant and you want this plato it's very similar in english plate and dish two possibilities but plate for me is more physical plate is the more physical object and the dish is the meal is the food so it is important really to be uh, to identify the difference between plate and dish they're flexible but for me dish is more food okay okay well done so that's a very good example of grammar and um, that's one paragraph and in one paragraph we have a lot of vocabulary and a lot of content so now I want to continue a little with this list this list is a list of phrasal verbs and every day we have started a little with the phrasal verbs and this is a very important document there are 20 pages okay we are on page 9 but it is very important and today I want to speak a little about a few phrasal verbs also we have another document another list of idioms and expressions and every day I want to introduce a few idioms and a few expressions so here is um, part seven pages and there are four we're on page four okay so we will continue a little if you want to finish and you're tired you can you can go obviously and um, and also remember everything is free but if you want to uh, give me a little support it's possible for one euro or two euro it would be a big help for me it's possible on paypal with this picture or with bizoom as well okay so if you want to finish and you want to go perfect and um, just keep this in mind it's an option and it would help me a lot but now we will continue with the list of uh, idioms and a list of phrasal verbs okay so this phrasal verb to give 
in Espanol is dar, so give chocolate, give help, give a hand, okay, give, but the significance with the preposition give up has the significance to quit, como rendir, rendir say in Espanol, okay, so to quit. So for example, the marathon, you are running the marathon and you give up, you quit, you finish, okay, very famous and I think most people probably are familiar with this expression, to give up is to quit, okay, and here's the example, never give up learning English, never quit, never stop learning English, okay, go away is general and very literal, so go is the verb and the preposition away is the movement, so you are here and go away, so it's flexible, for example, the dog, imagine the dog is disturbing you and you say to the dog, go away, okay, so leave, go away, that's one significance, the second significance is maybe travel, so you live in Ireland and you want to go away, you want to move to another country, you want to live in a different country, you want to go away, so it's flexible, okay, in different contexts, go back is to return, so I uh, go, this is important actually, the difference between go and come, so now I am in Dublin, and in the summer, I want to go to Italy. I want to go to London. I want to go to Brazil, okay, in the summer. But then when, quando, when I am in Brazil, I want to come back here, okay? So come back is usually depending on the position. So go to Brazil, but come back to the original position. Go and come, okay? That's important. And here, go back is return, okay? And here's one example. When are you going back to your house? Okay, so when are you returning to your house? Because you're in my house at the moment. When are you going back to your house? Okay, important. Here's the other example to go away. Subject I, yell is the verb to shout. Okay, so to yell has the significance to shout. And a little more advanced, but to yell is to shout, como gritar in Espanol, as the past simple. I yelled at, so the preposition direction at the dogs, to make them go away. So I shouted, I screamed at the dogs to make them go away. And the third example, go by. Remember the preposition by is similar to beside. So walk by the shop, walk by the park, like beside or past, okay? And to go by is to go past or go beside. So on the road, you are in the car and you drive by the restaurant you drive by the hotel you pass okay and here's the example we go by the coffee shop every day so we go by past the coffee shop every day it's a good example very simple but very detailed with the preposition okay go back on is very important in relation to a promise or a commitment so I make a commitment to you I make a promise to you and in the end I go back on my promise so I break my promise, I change my promise. So to go back on your word is to break your commitment or to break your promise, go back on. Okay, on is the word and you go back on. Here's the example, don't trust him. Okay, so do not trust him. Trust is like confidence. He always goes back on his promises. So the verb to trust is very important in English. So in Espanol it's como confiar. Okay, sorry, to trust. In Espanol, it's confiar, and the secret, the important point is in. So for the verb in English, unusual, very unusual to have in with the verb. This is the problem and the difference in Spanish. In Spanish, it's confiar en, verbo and preposition, but in English, only, generally, the verb trust. For example, trust me, trust you, trust him, trust the internet. This is the general rule in English, very important, okay? And example, to trust him, to trust her, and no in, for example, okay, with the verb. And the second point, the second issue is the substantive, okay? The trust, the substantive, and it's possible the preposition in this case. So I have trust, substantive, I have trust in you. So in English, the substantive, it's usually necessary in, but the verb, we eliminate in. That's the rule and the secret with trust. Very important, okay? So to go back on, go for is very simple, but it's obviously the verb to go. 
but go for is like a dream or an objective or a goal a target so the certificate first certificate advanced certificate proficiency certificate I suggest you go for the advanced certificate I suggest you try um, for this advanced certificate so to go for is to try intent are the job I suggest you go for the job I suggest you try the job you try to achieve lograr in espanol okay so to go for is to try to achieve to try to achieve and the verb to achieve is in espanol lograr okay and here I'll put it here so you can see in other languages because it is an important verb to achieve and the substantive is important as well so achieve here we go in Bulgarian Dutch French German Hindi Hungarian Italian Japanese Korean Portuguese Romanian Spanish Swahili Swedish Thai and Vietnamese we have no Indonesian that's the problem with the translator the translator has no Indonesian so here the example is to go for our team so a team is a kipo in Espanol is going for the gold medal so we are aiming in focar aiming okay so the aim for to try to achieve the aim for um that's the verb going for okay good expression very typical um it's possible in the restaurant so what are you going for in the restaurant you look at the menu you're very hungry you look at the menu i will go for the chocolate i will go for the pizza i will select i will choose to go for okay so it is possible and logical as well and um, go in for is participation and it's the same concept as well so competition you are in the competition preposition for competition in so you are in the competition and here's the example are you going in for the soccer this year at school so are you participating are you entering logical don't worry it's, it's logical okay this one's typical as well to discuss in detail so to go into the detail you have a problem and you want to explain in detail or the negative you do not want to enter the detail of the problem so you ask me Brian what is the problem and I say I don't want to go into detail so to go into detail so in is the movement again and the detail is here so to go into the detail here's the example I really do not want so it's the negative I really do not want to go into that so that is probably the problem or the details now so I don't want to enter I don't want to start okay go off is typical yes with the explosion or the bomb so the bomb go off so on is obviously on the ground on the floor on is maybe this position and for the bomb off is okay so to go off usually it's connected with the time tick 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 because it move to go to go off explode it's possible with the person if the person is very angry so the person normal 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 and one moment the person goes off like explodes very angry okay with the alarm on your telephone so the alarm at six o'clock goes off because the alarm no problem the clock and then boom, the sound that go off okay so here is three examples four examples look the final example is what I said with angry to become angry so Maria went off last night after I told her about losing her bike so the verb to lose is per there and the past simple is I lost and the substantive is the loss okay and that's a very good example at the end so Maria the past is went so go off went off so she became very angry last night after I told her so the verb to tell and say there's a little difference between tell and say tell is direct tell you tell him it's not necessary to the error the problem the error the mistake is tell to so in English normally tell you tell him tell her but say it's more typical to say to you say to him that's the difference between say and tell and here the past tell and told irregular I told her about losing her bike okay very good example um and again to go off so the television it's possible the television is on because on is active functioning like your job you are working and off you are not functioning you are free so the television is on but the television is off so to go off is to change 
so it's possible the television goes off after 10 minutes automatically okay and the second example is the clock it's all very similar concepts okay um so you can see go with the preposition is very very flexible and we have lots of phrasal verbs with go and the prepositions similar with get we have a lot of phrasal verbs with get and go so tomorrow we will continue with go and maybe one or two expressions now in relation to idioms so the last expression was itchy feet so the sensation when you are uh, itchy is you have the sensation to to scratch so the difference between to itch and itch and to scratch and scratch is this action like the dog to scratch and itch is the sensation itchy I have an itchy nose so it's the sensation that you want to scratch okay and itchy feet is when you feel uh, very uncomfortable and you want to do something you're constantly active and we have another word as well restless um, restless person is excuse my Spanish but there's a little vulgar expression in Spanish como culo inquieto so that's the expression in Spanish it's like restless person this is not vulgar this is more polite and more general but a restless person is similar to a person with itchy feet okay and remember one foot is singular and two feet is plural very irregular plural so a restless person is the person who cannot stay calm who cannot be easy necessary to move and to do something okay judge a book by its cover is a very famous expression so the verb to judge like to form an opinion to judge and the substantive is a juez in espanol the judge in the court in the tribunal you have the, the judge and the, the verb is to judge so judge a book you see the book and the cover of the book gives you the opinion it forms an opinion but maybe it's not the correct opinion because probably the book is more interesting so that's the famous expression never judge a book by its cover it's a metaphor for a person as well so never judge a person by the appearance okay um jump on the bandwagon is very famous so the verb to jump and the band wagon so wagon is like Volkswagen the wagon is the same it's the object to carry the things and the bandwagon is maybe the party so the wagon for the band is the area with the party and everybody joins the party but this is a metaphor for to follow the popular mo movement the popular thing at the moment so for example the football team this football team, uh, imagine Getafe. Getafe enter the Champions League. Getafe win the Champions League. And de repente, suddenly, everybody is a supporter of Getafe. Everybody buys the jersey. Everybody wants to support Getafe. So everybody jump on the bandwagon for the party. It's a very, very famous expression, very typical expression. Um, and very common, okay? So to keep something at bay, bay is related to the ocean and bay is related to the water and it's related to the military so if the army or the military attack and you keep the military at bay you keep the military away from the land from the ground so to keep something at bay is to protect and defend okay so for example the virus at the moment we try to keep the virus at bay to control and defend okay keep up appearances is a good expression as well so to keep up is a phrasal verb and this means to maintain the velocity okay so imagine running so your friend running is very uh, a lot of velocity very fast and you are very slow and your friend says to you keep up keep up is to maintain the distance because it's up one uh, level and keep up maintain okay so to keep up appearances is to maintain your appearance so imagine you have a group of friends and you have a party every week a party Friday this week next week and you want to appear every week so you want to maintain your appearances so to to appear at the party all the time okay it's flexible and you can use it in other situations as well keep your finger on the pulse so the pulse for the heart you have the heart and the heart beat but the pulse is maybe a uh, 72 per minute that's the pulse okay so the, here's the pulse and to keep your finger on the pulse is to identify and recognize 
the sensation, the atmosphere, the feeling. So the, the mood, you know the mood? So to recognize or to appreciate the mood is to keep your finger on the pulse. So to be very aware and to be very conscious of everything. Keeping your finger on the pulse. Keep in the dark, okay? So to keep, come on, maintain, to maintain somebody in the dark is to not tell them the information. So to keep the information from the person. If you keep the person in the dark, you hide, you do not reveal the information to the person. So typical in the company, the manager does not tell you the information, so the manager keeps you in the dark. Very good expression, very common as well. To kill time is very easy, so kill is matar in Espanol, and kill time is typical in the COVID situation. It's necessary to stay at home, so you really need to kill time. You need uh, to find an activity to pass the time and to kill the time. Okay, very logical and very typical. The next one is very typical as well. So two birds and you try to kill one bird, but you have the opportunity to kill two birds and this is better for you with one object, with one stone. Okay, so the stone is piedra in Espanol, the stone, and you try to kill two birds with the one stone. So basically it's a metaphor you try to do two activities, you try to, to complete two activities with the one idea, with the one action. Very famous expression, very good uh, common expression and idiom, okay? Um, okay, so maybe we'll finish there. So that's the idioms and phrasal verbs and the article from the National Geographic and the telenovela from Ireland and the introduction to the grammar. So that's a very good class. A lot of good quality and a lot of good vocabulary i hope you can understand me okay i hope you can understand the class i really hope the class is a benefit for you and um, it's a good opportunity for me to work and it's a very good opportunity for me to help people at the moment and um, please give me your comment and give me your opinion give me your feedback you can write in the in the chat or on the video and uh, tell me your opinion and hopefully everything is good Again, everything is free. I'm very happy that it's free. If you want to give me a little support, it would be great because probably in the future, I will need your support. That's possible with Bizum in Spain, and that's the telephone number with one euro or two euro, or with PayPal, with your camera, you can check this code and it will direct you to a, a one euro donation if you want. And there's the website at the top. It's only optional and if you're happy and if you have the ability and you want to support, fantastic, it would be great. But it's, it's only optional, okay? So have a great day. Thank you so much. And my plan is to continue tomorrow at the same time. Hopefully I can continue in this new location and there's no problem with the internet or with the telephone or with the technology. So thank you so much and have a great day and thank you for the class. Okay, bye-bye.